Hi everyone, Harry here from Red Giant. In this tutorial, we'll be covering the bounce physics section of Trap Code Particular. This section allows you to define 3D layers in After Effects to be used as surfaces for your particles to collide with. When those particles collide, we can have them bounce, stick, slide, and we have other options that allow the particles to either end their lifespan or even generate more particles with the aux system. So let's jump into a new comp and set this scene up. Now I'm gonna copy and paste just a few of these things from my previous comp, and I'll explain exactly what they are. Two of these layers are simply solids in After Effects. They're just 1920 by 1080 solids in 3D space. One is at a slight angle, and one is simply flat, acting as a floor. You'll also notice that I've actually named this one here floor, and the other one is called wall, even though it's actually kind of at an angle. I've got a light here just to make things interesting. It's a simple point light up above, and I have a camera. All pretty straightforward stuff. So I'll make a layer for a particular, apply the effect, and we'll jump down to the physics section and switch our physics model to bounce. Now what I need to do is position the emitter above this blue solid, and I want the particles to fall down and collide with that surface to create some sort of particle interaction. So I'll move my emitter in X that way, and I'll move it up in the Y just a little bit. I'll jump to a custom view and just kind of orbit around to get a feel for the position of these particles. It's pretty close. I think they need to move up just a little bit. I'll move them forward along that to blue plane just a little bit. Okay, so they are emitting from a point emitter outward in all directions. I'll take the gravity and turn this up to 100, and this will have our particles accelerate downward, as we've learned. So now we can see that the particles are intersecting the space of that 3D solid. In fact, it's intersecting the space of, of both of the solids. But they are not actually doing anything just yet, and that's because we need to define what the floor layer is and what this wall layer is. So down here in the physics section, I'll twirl open bounce, and you'll notice we have a floor layer that we can define and a wall layer. You can really just think of these as two interchangeable surfaces that we can use to have particles interact with. Floor layers and wall layers essentially work exactly the same. So if I set the floor layer to my floor and I set the wall to the wall, now if I scrub through this and I play, we can see that the particles are now bouncing off of the surface of that blue layer. Now with a default lifespan of three seconds, we don't get to see the bounce physics play out that much. So I'll go to the particle lifespan and I'll turn this up to a pretty high value like 20. I'm also going to go to the emitter section under emission extras and turn up the pre-run and this is going to run the particle life uh, as if it were running 100% before frame zero. So now you can see the particles are starting here. They fall down from gravity, they hit this surface, they bounce and land on this surface and they're kind of gathering right here. If I take this floor layer and just angle it just a little bit, you'll see that the particles actually will now start to slide off of that surface as well. Now in my other example, I made it look a little bit more interesting using some custom particles. So let me switch that over to using that custom particle. So I'll switch this from a sphere to a sprite colorize, and I'll click on the sprite library here, and we'll load just a basic sphere like this one right here. You'll notice these basic spheres are all kind of a shade of gray, and that's on purpose. They're a neutral gray so that you can use the particular colorize feature to add some color to them. I'll also add a bit more size to them because the default size is a little bit small. Now just to add a little bit of separation in between the particles, shadowlets can really help here. So I'll go to shadowlet from main and turn that on and I'll turn up the opacity in this case because I think uh, it needs a bit of a boost. There we go. 
and I mentioned we were going to colorize these. So I'll go to the set color and we'll have this pull a random color from the gradient and we'll go to the color chart here. Maybe I'll just hit random a couple times and see if we get lucky. There, that seems to work. Both of these layers have a setting here that allow you to define how we are interpreting that plane. Even though our layer has a finite size, by default it treats it as if it is an infinite plane. So if I move this over, we'll see that it is still treating these solids as an infinite plane. So if I go to the wall, that's the blue layer here, and I switch this out to interpret the layer size, we'll have some of these, if I have it positioned correctly, some of these will hit the surface and bounce, and some of them will fall down. Now I also need to go to the floor and also set this to layer size, and we'll notice that these particles will also now fall down off of the surface. Let me move the emitter position back to zero one more time. There's one more option in there you might have noticed, which is to use the layer alpha. So I'm going to go to the blue layer and add a simple mask. And I'm going to subtract this instead of adding, so I'll basically cut a hole right in the center. Now, if I go to Bounce Physics and I am looking at the blue layer, which is the wall, and I set the wall mode to use the layer alpha, it's not going to fall through that hole just yet because it is interpreting the layer using its source. And this is how After Effects behaves by default. But under our options here for that wall layer, we can set this to use the masks of the layer. And now the particles will actually fall through the hole. If I make it a little bit smaller, we'll have some falling through the hole and some falling onto the floor layer below. What the particles do is controllable, so you can have them either bounce or slide along the surface instead of bouncing. So they'll just follow a trajectory along the surface of the, the layer. You can also just have it stick to the layer so that they'll gather exactly where they land. Or you can set it to kill, and this will end the particle uh, before its lifespan as it hits the surface. I'm going to take this emitter and just move it directly over the floor layer. So right now, I think I still have this set to kill. But if I set this to bounce, this will, you know, bounce along the surface. But there's another cool thing that we can do here, and this will work well with using the kill setting, is that in the aux system, we have the ability to generate aux particles when a particle collides with the surface. Now I'll go to the emitter section and set this to a box and I'll set the emitter size to just kind of a square. So we'll set the emitter size Y to be zero, and we'll just kind of spread this emitter out just a bit. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to set the particle type back to a sphere. And in fact, we don't even need the, um, we don't need the color map on it. So sometimes you're going to be using particular to generate rain. In fact, I'm going to move the position of the emitter just a little bit higher so that we don't see where they're starting. I just kind of want them to fall downward and then hit the space of the, the floor. Right now, I still have this set to kill. If I set this to bounce, we'll see that the particles stay and continue to bounce off of this surface. But I'm going to set this to kill and then go to the aux system and turn this to at bounce event. And what this will do is generate particles every point where the particle collides with the surface. And it will only generate one set of particles. So it'll emit once at the bounce event for each main particle. Just so we can differentiate these, let me set the aux particles to a different color. And we'll zoom in a little bit. So if you're going for a sort of rain kind of feeling and we, you want your rain to hit the surface and have a bit of a splash, 
the aux system bounce event is actually a great way to do this. I would probably keep these fairly small and actually maybe have them scale down over their lifespan. Also, I would probably turn up the particles per collision. So this is how many particles we actually create at each collision event. And let's turn on the motion blur. Now I should get rid of this slightly ridiculous color. Now just to give it a bit of a heavier feeling, more like it is falling rain, I'll turn this gravity up to speed up the particles. So that is all about the bounce physics section of Trap Code Particular. My name is Harry Frank for Red Giant. Thank you for watching.